Hi, I'm Ashley James with Good Morning Maryland. Thank you so much for joining us for our monthly Facebook Live with GBMC. Do your legs ever feel heavy, painful, maybe even itchy? These could be a sign of a serious disorder. Today we are talking with Dr. Jennifer Heller, the director of the Bain Center at GBMC. She's a newcomer to our Facebook Lives. You've been here before. Thank you for joining us again. It's my pleasure. Nice to see you again. This is a really popular topic, and we're glad to have you back to talk about it, talking about vein disorders, problems in the legs. What are some common vein disorders? When we hear vein disorders, what are we really talking about? There are uh, two types of tubes in the body that carry blood, uh, arteries and veins. Arteries bring blood from our heart down, and veins have a much more difficult responsibility because they need to bring blood back up to the heart and lungs against gravity. And the way that they're supposed to do that under normal circumstances uh, are with little structures inside them called valves. So if this is a vein, the valves are supposed to propel the blood up in the legs and then close. And if those valves don't close, extra blood falls down into the leg and causes common symptoms that we see with vein disorders. So what are some common symptoms of the vein disorders? Uh, common symptoms all uh, turn back to this extra blood that we see in our legs with the uh, vein valves not working. So uh, heaviness, achingness, uh, fatigue in the legs, particularly as the day wears on uh, because we tend to sit and stand throughout the course of the day. Uh, people in, in professions such as the police force, teachers, uh, hairstylists, all who stand quite a bit, teachers, we're back to school now, uh, all tend to stand and sit quite a bit during the day and they are very prevalent towards uh, these symptoms. So that brings me to my next question. I mean, can this happen to anyone or are there people who are more at risk? You were saying how some jobs, you know, might affect your, you know, might be a risk factor. And age groups, men, women, does it affect anyone equally? We don't know precisely how uh, vein disorders occur, uh, but we do know that there are several significant risk factors. Uh, Multiparity plays an age, which means increasing number of pregnancies, uh, as does being female. And the reason for that are hormonal changes. As well, advancing age plays a role, and heredity. So if you have a mother or a grandmother uh, who has varicose veins, it's very likely that you may develop them in the future. Okay. Just want to say hello to everyone who is joining us on Facebook. We have a lot of people uh, saying hello. Zell, Myra, good morning. Maria, Gilbert, thank you for saying hello to us. Lee, Brenda, Brianna, if you have your questions, now is the perfect time to ask. Why we have Dr. Heller here with us. Let's ask her uh, everything we want to know about vein disorders. Um, another question that we had submitted is um, if these symptoms are familiar, to people, how do you go about getting evaluated for a vein condition? Is that easy to do? It sure is. Uh, sometimes though, uh, vein disorders, the symptoms that we just described are very common and they may not have anything to do with uh, your vein disease. So I do always recommend a nice first step is to go to your general practitioner or your internist who knows you uh, very well and then they can point you towards the correct direction. Okay, a question on Facebook. If not treated, what can we experience later on in life? Um, varicose veins in and of themselves, if they are not producing symptoms, do not need to be treated. Um, that's a, a little bit of a common myth. So if people don't have significant symptoms, that heaviness, aching, uh, thrombophlebitis, or clots associated with the veins, um, it's very likely that one can live on without any significant intervention. So again, it's helpful to be able to go to a physician to determine where you are clinically. Uh, another question on Facebook or a comment, I had vein closures and my veins still look terrible. So is that something she should go back and see a specialist for? Absolutely, yes. Um, there are certain procedures such as vein closure, uh, one of many minimally invasive procedures that we do have out there. Uh, the vein closures, if we think about a tree, the vein closures tend to treat uh, a, a main branch off the tree trunk. And the veins that you may be seeing are twigs off the vein that was closed. And certainly, uh, if those veins are troublesome, uh, they can certainly be treated as well with a different technique. Okay, um, and as people join on, we might get some of the same questions. Are men affected too? We have somebody just asked. Men are absolutely affected, just not as frequently. Uh, but yes, I see, probably in my practice, I see about 40% uh, are male. Are treatments covered by Medicare? Yes, they are. 
uh, in the vast majority of treatments are. Okay. Uh, there is a cosmetic technique called uh, injection sclerotherapy of spider veins, those flat veins that we a lot of us tend to witness on ourselves. Uh, and that is not treated by Medicare. But most of the other treatments that are deemed medically appropriate are treated, are covered. Okay, Jerry, thank you for sharing this with us. She said, I had mine treated last year, walked out after an easy procedure, so much release. Uh, relief of symptoms. So is it a pretty easy procedure for some people? Mm -hmm. It really is. And, and people who have significant symptoms like we discussed will actually see, like Jerry just described, uh, almost an immediate uh, relief. And they're very durable, long-lasting relief. Okay, a good question coming in. Is it possible to have vein disease without visible varicose veins? Yes, it absolutely is. Again, you may have heaviness, aching discomfort, and not, not even realize that you have any kind of varicosities, uh, but you could have underlying vein disease. One of the ways that we're able to diagnose that is with an ultrasound, which is non-invasive, safe, and is covered by insurance. Okay, another question coming in on Facebook. Is there anything I can do to prevent this from happening to me? It's a great question. Um, there's nothing that you can uh, do to prevent the vein valves from not forming properly or becoming dysfunctional, uh, but staying active is very helpful. Every time, if you all at home who are watching now actually bend your ankle, you can feel the back of your calf muscle tighten, and that actually extrinsically from the outside using your muscles helps push that vein blood back up. Staying slender also helps. Okay. Uh, another question. So is GBMC the vein center your only location? Someone was asking, is there treatment centers? Uh, is there a treatment center in Harford County? Um, the only uh, vein center where I am is the vein center at GBMC. Okay. Yes. So not too far away, though. Really not. Got to go visit her there. We hear that you're going to be visiting the Maryland State Fair um, on September 1st. So what are you doing there and how can people find you? Uh, yes, we're very excited to, uh, to partner with the State Fair and be there. So as you're looking at the 4-H exhibits and getting on the rides in between the corn dogs and the cow palace, <laughs> we will be there. Um, and we will be uh, there from 10 in the morning until 4 p.m. And we'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. We'll be performing quick ultrasounds so that you can look at these vein valves we're talking about today. Um, and we'll also be giving some uh, little gifts to people who answer questions. So you'll have some machines on hand, so you'll be doing... He will. My ultrasonographer wow, okay. will be there as well, and we'll have a whole group of people ready to greet you and uh, answer any questions that you have. So is this a pretty common problem for people? I mean, it sure is. A lot? Yeah, okay. it sure is. The question is when to treat and when not to treat and how best to uh, provide a durable result uh, through a minimally invasive way when it's necessary. Okay. Is there a certain age group that's affected more so than others? I would say pe uh, people at about their mid-30s uh, or greater tend to be most prevalent. Um, but from 35 or so onward, it tends to be very, very common. Okay, well, I'm interested in this question. We have uh, Caitlin wrote in, will varicose veins caused by pregnancy resolve themselves after the baby is born? Um, are, you know, and what does pregnancy have to do with varicose veins? That's a, a really great question. Um, there hasn't been much significant research done uh, on varicose veins or vein disease during pregnancy. Um, I actually did a study about a year and a half ago uh, that looked at the use of compression stockings during pregnancy, and I'm sorry to tell you that it would be helpful for you to wear them during your okay. pregnancy. <laughs> okay, <laughs> just as well, an you got to do what you got to do, right? <laughs> um, with the first pregnancy, the varicose veins that one develops, they do tend to resolve or go away after the uh, pregnancy is completed about eight weeks afterwards. But for whatever reason, in my experience, it seems to me that after baby number three, things don't tend to go away as quickly. Okay. Uh, so the, the real question that we have at this point in time is if people, women come and they're in the midst of their childbearing uh, years, when to intervene and when not to intervene. So uh, in my practice, what I do is, is if the var uh, varicose veins do not resolve uh, postpartum, and, and or if they were significantly troublesome during the pregnancy, such as a bad bout of phlebitis, then I will intervene before pregnancy, you know, they're done with their family planning. Gotcha, okay. Uh, Debbie says on Facebook, I just chimed in, is correcting varicose veins covered by insurance? And I know we just answered this, but you said it is. It, it generally is, yes. Okay, Alicia says, I had all my heavy rope-like varicose veins repaired with laser therapy, but the injection sites have returned and are very painful. What to do next? 
the best thing is to go back uh, and have that looked at with an ultrasound to see where those injection site varicose veins are, are coming from again. Because there's a lot, veins are a little bit like glaciers. So what we see on the surface may be very different underneath. So it would be helpful to get that ultrasound so that we can uncover that mystery under the skin. Okay, uh, Jenny says you're a great doctor. Thank, Thank you. you for tuning in. Thank you. And uh, Deb says, at what point is it necessary to get varicose veins addressed? When they're causing symptoms. So again, heaviness, aching, fatigue, itching. And even if you don't have those symptoms, if you develop complications with long-standing vein disease, such as phlebitis, which could be one of those bumpy varicosities causing warmth, firmness, or tenderness at that site, uh, or changes in the skin in the lower leg. So people who have long-standing vein pooling in the lower leg can develop uh, thickening of the skin, hardness of the skin, and sometimes over a long period of time we call it an upside-down champagne bottle because that area right above your ankle becomes very, very narrow and firm and then it, it goes up and it makes the calf actually much more elongated and wide. So all of those things can occur. So if it just looks bad, but it's not feeling painful or having any, you're not having any side effects, then you would just say... I probably right. would. Sometimes though people have these um, subtle signs on their legs uh, and so when I'm able to look at that on physical exam I may say they're not causing you um, any trouble but because of these findings that I'm looking at it may be more prudent to intervene. Gotcha. Okay, another question. Um, I had the ultrasound last month. I have vein reflux. The doctor said they do not have to be fixed and there is no treatment or surgery at the doctor that they went to. Is this true? So um, the, the doctor who you went to, I, I have to praise them because uh, conservative, uh, thoughtful management with varicose vein disease is really important. So it's possible that one of two things occurred. It's possible that your superficial veins uh, were normal and the reflux that the doctor described to you showed that the other veins that we don't operate on, the deep veins, have reflux. And if only the deep veins have reflux, we don't operate on them. Or, as we just described, it's possible that the uh, superficial veins uh, had reflux, but the person who wrote in doesn't have any symptoms that warrant an intervention. Because even though these, the, all of these treatments are minimally invasive and have low risk, it's not zero risk. Yeah. So we always have to make sure, as physicians, that we're providing all of our patients with the safest care and the best algorithm. Gotcha. Uh, we had a question that came in um, saying, I get pains in my legs, taking warm baths help, but it's just hard getting up and down in the tub. Do you have any suggestions for me? I, uh, I would recommend that uh, that patient go back to their internal medicine doctor. It's possible that it could be due to something entirely different than varicose veins. Just because you see the veins in your leg doesn't necessarily mean it's from that. It could be mm -hmm. degenerative joint disease or anything else. Let's say you, you think you need to go to the doctor, you're having some of the symptoms that you mentioned. I mean, can you go right to the vein center or is this something you should go to your primary care first and, and have them send you there? How does that work? I think if people, uh, you know, if they've had previous uh, vein procedures done before or they can literally see the varicose veins in their legs and they're having local discomfort at that area, they should absolutely, absolutely come to the vein center first. Okay. Another question that was uh, sent to us before says, I am very fit, have recently started feeling a heaviness in my legs, but I thought vein disorders mainly affect people who are overweight. Could this discomfort be caused by vein issues? It also absolutely can. And I notice in uh, my patients who are uh, very, very fit and exercise a lot, that they almost have a little bit of a paradoxical response, meaning after they're flexing and flexing their ankle and they're working out, they feel fantastic and then they stop and they may feel something worse because the, the venous blood is pooling again. So that's absolutely possible. Okay, Samantha just joined us on Facebook. My veins are more noticeable after giving birth, but they are not painful. Are they likely not harmful or should I make an appointment to be safe? I think it's reasonable to make an appointment, uh, particularly if you're going to be uh, thinking about having future pregnancies. Okay, another question. Ginny says, I went through those symptoms and Dr. Heller fixed that in 2006. Now today, still no issues. Compression stockings do help. I see a vein in the back of the same leg that is sore to touch. Can surgery be done again? Yes, it can be. Yes. Okay, so more than once you can have Absolutely. surgery. Is that common or just typically one and done? There, there tends to be a, a, a good durability. So Jenny, thank you uh, for writing in. There tends to be a, about a 10-year good durable window um, and then 
patients may have uh, symptoms recur. Uh, and the reason is it's a very interesting characteristic about the veins because when they meet an obstruction in the leg as opposed to the arteries, they can develop new branches. And that's about how long it takes. Okay, want to talk again um, about surgery and mm -hmm. is it, are you staying overnight? Is it a quick thing? And what's um, recovery like? Sure. Uh, about 15 years ago, uh, vein surgery and procedures were completely revolutionized. When I was a resident back in the 18th century, um, <laughs> we did vein stripping and we literally pulled the vein out. It was in the main operating room and patients stayed in the hospital for several days. And now patients can really walk in and walk out. So it's uh, much easier, much more straightforward, less painful. Uh, I will. I don't give my patients pain prescriptions and they, wow. they don't need it. So they're, so they're really not usually better. in too much pain afterwards, they're really days not. following. Mm -mm. Okay. And as we talked about before, patients who have bad symptoms tend to feel almost immediately better, which wow. is very exciting. Yeah, that is. That's great to hear. Uh, Darlene says, I have been feeling heaviness, pain, and a burning feeling in my legs for years. Never knew what the problem was. My doctor told me the blood flow in my legs was not flowing through the proper blood valve. There are times when I run for a bus and my legs get very heavy, and when I go to step up on the bus or a curb, I have fallen because I can't feel my legs at that point. What would you recommend here? Uh, again, this could, could be or could not be due to the veins. It's possible that, um, you know, I, we don't know what her other uh, medical problems are. Um, certainly the arteries may also be playing a role. So burning also could be due to vein disease, but it could also be due to uh, a neuropathy. So I would recommend that she, as a first step, goes back to her internal medicine doctors to tease that out. Okay. Uh, Amanda says on Facebook, I have diabetes and I have a lot of spider veins. I have a lot of pain with my legs feeling heavy. Am I allowed to have treatment? Uh, you, she is absolutely allowed to have treatment. Uh, certainly we would take a look at both the arteries and the veins. Uh, in patients who have diabetes, um, as I'm sure she knows, um, the arteries in the leg tend to be affected uh, and blockage can occur with time. And if surgery needs to be done on the arteries, we commonly use the veins in the leg as a bypass uh, route. So uh, I would really want to make sure before we shut down a vein that we could potentially use for her arteries um, to make sure that everything was okay. What would you tell someone, um, you know, who's having, who's having these issues um, and these side effects, why to get treated? I mean, what could be the risk if they don't see a professional? Like, what's the long-term risk mm -hmm. there? Um, long-term, there have been some uh, interesting epidemiologic studies about vein disease over time. And when they took a look uh, at thousands of people, um, a, there's about a 15% risk in one's lifetime that they could develop an end-stage complication of vein disease, such as an open wound or a venous ulcer. Certainly as well, if uh, someone has large varicose veins that are very large and bumpy and they travel a great deal or they sit a great deal, uh, one could develop superficial phlebitis in those, in, in those veins. Another question that we had submitted from Valerie, in the evening, my leg constantly moves and my toes feel like they're asleep. Could these be possible signs of vein issues? It could possibly be. Um, and again, that could be better teased out and distinguished with asking about other symptoms. It's possible this could be due to restless leg, for instance, or lower back problem. And certainly that could be teased out. You talked about this. Uh, Jessica's just joining us. Are varicose veins hereditary? And yes, indeed, they are, yeah. Jessica. So if they're hereditary, and let's say you're seeing them, but maybe they haven't given you any pain yet, mm -hmm. should you still go see a professional because you know that they run in the family and maybe you know, your parents mm -hmm. or grandparents have had major problems? Yeah, there's, there's no reason to be proactive. We don't have any good data to show that you should be proactive about that. Um, but certainly staying fit, staying slender, activating that calf muscle pump are all great ways to prevent anything. And if you do have a, a lot of members in your family, uh, who may have passed on the, uh, the bad vein valve uh, gene to you, uh, when one becomes pregnant, for instance, it's helpful to be proactive and try to stave off uh, vein disease complications with compression. I know we talked a lot about um, treatment and what it's like after surgery, um, but we did have a question of, will I need to be out of work following treatment? It didn't sound like it, but I just want to make sure you answered that. Yeah, I, you know, I tend to be uh, much more conservative than my colleagues, so I tend to have my patients out of work the next day, and really the only reason is because they feel so great 
that they just go back and they're sitting at their desk and they're not moving. So I prefer that they're moving and they're walking around. Okay. So. All right, we've had some great questions come in. Is there anything, you know, a question that you get all the time that you want to get out there to people because you hear it so much in your office that, you know, we didn't cover by any chance? Um, it's, uh, it's the question actually that, um, that was brought up several times today, but I think it's a really good one, that uh, if, if someone has varicose veins and they can see them, but they have absolutely no symptoms, um, there isn't an indication to be aggressive about them. Okay. Yeah, a great tip because a lot of people see them and, you know, you start to panic a little that something exactly. might be wrong. Um, and then I also want to remind people about the Maryland State Fair again. So you will be there September 1st. Again, you will have a booth set up. Lots of you from the Vein Center. Yes, we'll all GNC. be there, actually. Our You'll entire all be there. Vein okay. Center will be there. Well, that's a great way to meet you, too, if maybe somebody has an appointment and doesn't know any of the doctors yet. Absolutely, or if you have a question and you're passing by, we'd, I'd love to meet you and answer any questions that you may have. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you can go to www.gbmc.org slash vein. There we go. I got it right. All right. And of course, you can watch the entirety of our Q&A on Facebook again. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you. All right. We'll see you next month for our Facebook Live.